Hi and welcome back to my playthrough of Runebound. During the last episode we entered Act 2 and Ariad also entered the party. So until the end of this act we pretty much have to defeat her otherwise all of our heroes would lose the game and I think think we can get started so let's start with Sila and of course first thing she wants to do is to move and the idea is to move her up to forge or into one of the cities in order to do some more shopping so I think it would be cool to have another combat token for her so let's see where we would get and this isn't really great oh man that was really an unlucky roll nevertheless I think I want to move her up there so I think I will spend this die I will spend this die in order to move here I would need a wild card or I would need to exert but right now I don't want to exert to be honest so I think I will leave it be and will just roll again for her so let's do some cleanup and yeah hope for it oh should I no maybe no maybe I will rather train then because I really want to hold on to both of those skill cards and I want to have at least one more in order to exert so what do we get here aggressive healing touch yeah I think for now we will keep the healing touch even though we will not really be able to use it let's discard the other two this was the second action and now we will roll the movement die again and keep in mind she has four action because of her ascendant skill she learned during the last episode or so okay that's more like it here we have a wild which we need to go there we would need whatever wild because we were crossing a river there so this is the first one, but in order to make it to the same space, we still need another wild and we don't have that. But I think this is now the time where we would exert. So we would get rid of the healing touch and this allows us to ignore the ability from the scenario. Per hex, we have to do that, but then I can spend this die to move into forge. This was the second action. Now I want to shop in forge and this is the offer right now. So the marsh cloak is okay i guess unfortunately doesn't have any golden symbols but still it's a search and i can use searches pretty well to be honest yeah and those are supplies not sure if i really need those so let's see what we get on top of this an ancient sword Oof. it's okay of course we get one additional damage here but it's already a weapon and we already have a weapon the patchwork wand and I think, to be honest, this is much cooler. This tactics can do me really some good. And we have a golden mist symbol here. So I think I will not go for it. So I think in this case, I will go with a marsh cloak. And yeah, maybe it can help me. So we will pay two coins. And here is the combat token for that. Uh, originally, I thought I still had one more action left, but of course that's wrong because I moved, I drained. I moved again and I shopped. So those were already all my four actions. Okay, then let's move over to the red scorpion who happens to be in Everton and she wants to take care of that family business. So she will spend all her three actions in Everton now to smuggle some jewels. So we would now test mine to gain four bucks and we would be allowed to take this card as a trophy even if we would fail. We would be allowed to draw two cards because that's her mind value. So let's go for it. So that's the first card. That's the second card. Perfect. Guiding light. That's a success. So we are getting four pieces of gold. Woohoo! And we would also be allowed to take this card as a trophy. That's really awesome. With this, she might be really able to buy something yeah, pretty nice somewhere in Tamil era. So, okay, but that's already the end of the round. Let's move on. Then it's back to Sila starting the new round. First thing to do would be to train because yeah, she wants to have some cards in her hand in order to exert scavenging whenever you rest heal all damage not bad negotiations whenever okay i think we know this one and we also know the cultural immersion i think in this case it really doesn't matter so whatever i will hold on to this one and pretty much a currency in order to exert with her second action she wants to move somewhere so she needs at least to roll one wild yes perfect that's 
perfect result. Now I was thinking to either move up here, get an event or move to this combat token here. And I think I want to start with this one here because there's still a chance to get some gold here in Burrow Town. But on the other hand, this gives me money. But do I need money? No, I think I will spend this one then I will spend whatever this one doesn't really matter to make it up here I still have two more action left and with those two more actions I will flip this adventure gem and here we have the event card smuggling a smuggler asks you to deliver weapons to his contact in Burrow Town and guess what we are just around the corner of Burrow Town can you believe that Awesome, but maybe we should check the card first before we starting to celebrate. Keep this card, you may spend one action in Barrow Town to sell it for three gold and take this card as a trophy or we test might report the smuggler gain one gold for each success in this card. This card, no, no, I will totally go for this one here. That's perfect rumor. I will certainly keep that. But I think those are all the actions of Sila training, moving, adventuring. That's the case. And now we would move over to Red Scorpion, still in Everton. And I think we would just mosey in right next to this adventure jam here. Let's flip it for the remaining two actions. Let's draw the card. And here we see another quest. Gem of the stars. A valuable rune shard is rumored to have been recovered by an unworthy group of mountain bandits hiding on the nearby peak. Explore Exile Peak. Wow, again we are incredibly lucky as she's standing pretty much in front of the Exile Peak here. Awesome. I'm not cheating you guys. I promise that. But let's see what our rewards would be. Okay, we could gain the card. This is important because we still could think of learning that stamina skill there. We already have two strength based skills, but you never know. Maybe we want this more than the other one. But then we could also gain some gold. And this is also great. And trade the fabled room shard card discard this card to choose and gain one asset in any market worth no more than eight bucks wow those two rewards are really awesome yeah i will certainly keep this quest and this pretty much ends our round let's move into the next one and of course sila wants to move here to burrow town in order to go after her rumor and make some gold fortunately she needs to roll two wild symbols or at least one in order to make it there because of this web let's see okay that's only one and we also need uh, a mountain symbol ah that was really a crappy roll wow 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 Either way, we would not be able to make it there. Of course, we can use this one here, but maybe I will do it differently. I will use the hill symbol here. Therefore, I have to exert in order to negate the scenario rules pretty much. Then I will use the wild card to make it here into Barrow Town. This was her first action in Barrow Town. She will spend an action and yeah, basically sell it for three bucks. And she's still allowed to keep this card as a trophy. That's certainly worth doing. She still has two more action left. And I think with her third action, she will remove this web here because she's in a town. This gives her an, an additional coin, which is great. And then she still has one more action left. And now she really has to start moving south because Ariad will also move to the south and then ending her rampage in Tamalia. But of course, if she ever makes it to Tamalia, this means all four cities have webs and then we would lose the game. So we really have to start moving south now for her. So again, Let's roll some dice and we need a lot of mountain or wild symbols. So that's really not that easy. It's really a bad spot for her. But apparently that wasn't that bad, to be honest. So here we have a mountain. There we have a mountain and there we have a mountain. That's pretty good, to be honest. So I think I will totally make that move one, two and three. And this ends her turn. And now she really is pretty much okay in order to move south. Nice. Then it's the red scorpion again. She wants to move to the exile peak there in order to do her quest. She also rolls four dice. She doesn't need anything special to be honest. Yeah, okay. <laughs> that really doesn't 
whatever matter anyway. She rolled two wilds, that's perfect. Now on Exile Peak, yeah, she wants to do some adventuring. So we are looking at least for a forest and a mountain. This would be perfect, of course. Third one would be even cooler, to be honest. So let's see what we get here. So we pretty much only have one result here. So in this case, I think she wants to... No, I think she wants to... Yeah, let, let's spend that stamina one. That's the first exert. So let's go for it. Let's reroll that. So we are looking for a wild or a mountain symbol. This would be pretty nice. Ah, she's not lucky. She's not lucky. Should she do that again? Yeah, I think so. She will exert the sense weakness card to reroll one of those dice again. Again, come on, a mountain or a wild. Ah, gosh, can you believe that? And now I'm not so sure anymore, but to be honest, two weapons versus our other one. No, I think not. Let's exert one more time. Let's take the same die again. A mountain or a wild. Ah, the same one. Can you believe that? Okay, I think she wants to hold on to that. Oh, should she? Ah, but it's really... One in a third chance that she gets something, then she would gain three gold. No, I think I want to hold on to that skill, to be honest. So I will keep this card as a trophy. That's at least kind of a bonus. And I think with her third action, she will just move right into that space here. So she might then be able to flip this token at the start of her next round. Those were already all three of her actions. Yeah, that's the case. So let's move the round token down. Let's get our story card. And here we have Spawned of Curses. The wild spiders covering Terry North seem to be drawn to the dark energy that abounds in the cursed ruins. Place one web in the cursed ruins. When a hero destroys the web on the cursed ruins, that hero searches the combat deck and discard ball for an enemy named Bane Spider. We know this one. And fights that enemy. Then discard this card. Okay, where are those cursed ruins? Actually, right next to her. So we have the story token. We have a web on that space. Of course, this would limit her movement, kind of, but it would also provide her basically another combat token. And the Bane Spider, I think, it wasn't that bad, to be honest. You should be able to take her out. Yeah, okay, let's see if she can manage to do that during the next round or so. But of course, we must not forget to move Ariad all the way down there to Riverwatch. And of course, she will also leave a web down there. And I think I will do one more round. And the idea for Sila is still to move closer south of where Ariad will end up at some point in time. But I think before I would roll her movement dice, I want to train really having a hand size of only three can be quite limiting to be honest. So what do we have here? Circle of protection once per combat round, you make cert and test spirit to cancel a search ability. Mm -hmm. Nice. Evacuation protocol whenever you retreat. Okay, I think we know this one. And the wild heart when you rest. Okay, those are all not really great. This is the coolest one for now. I think I want to hold on to it, but I'm relatively sure that I want to whatever use it to exert. With the second action, I want to move and again, basically southwest. That's pretty cool, I believe. That's a cool one. Let's see, so we need a mountain symbol here. We need whatever, this one here. We could use this one and this one. Again, we are moving adjacent to a web. This was her second action, and now I'm really tempted to move Sila to Tamalir, because I just notice in Tamalir there are those fists of iron. For one, it would give her one strength ability basically then she would be able to learn a strength skill to be honest and the ability and the icons are pretty pretty powerful to be honest so i think yeah let's go for it we still have two more actions if i'm not mistaken yeah we trained then we moved so let's do some cleanup let's prepare the dice tray and we are really looking for a lot of wow wild not one. This really hurts like crazy, to be honest. 
So we have to exert twice to make it here. And I think I want to do that. So one here, whatever, one there to move on to this space. Again, we need to exert twice. So I think I definitely want to get rid of this one. And for the second one, I'm not so sure. This one is, I think mm. this gives us additional health points. <sighs> but we have the complete confidence. I think this can help us to save some. No, let's discard this one. This might be a mistake. I'm aware of that, but still it allows us to move onto this space here. Then I think I will spend one action to get rid of that web because it's really limiting our movement. But this gives us one piece of gold, which brings her to 10 gold coins in total, which is really quite a lot. But I think these were already all four of her actions. She trained, she moved twice and she removed the web. Yeah, that's the case. Let's move over to Red Scorpion. But before she does anything, I think she has to train because she's down to only one card and you really have to have some cards in order to exert. That's really important. Adventurous, draw a card. Okay, I think right now that's not really that important anymore. Another red one. When you defeat an enemy, you may gain a bonus trophy. That can be nice. Sense of direction. Once per turn, you may reroll up to X. Wow, that's not too bad. This really isn't bad, to be honest something to keep in mind to be honest here we get another strength point that's awesome because then she could learn another skill no she cannot because first of all she has to learn it ah oh, man crap okay then yeah i think let's get rid of this card for now she's now to her hand size of four and i think now it would be time to ah, flip this do we have enough time yeah i think we should we should have enough time to flip this one here those are her three actions already let's draw a card and here we found a grand master, an elvish monastic has decided to travel and teach her secrets and abilities to the world. Approach a teacher to help you refine your abilities, test strength, mind or spirit to discard a learned skill of your choice corresponding to that attribute and then reveal cards from the skill deck until you reveal a skill card of that attribute and learn that skill for free. Wow! Wow, that's tempting. Oh, invite the master to join you. Test spirit minus one, a mine minus one. If you get two or more successes, keep this card. Otherwise, shuffle this card back. While you have this card at the start of each combat round, deal your four. Wow, that's awesome. At the start of each combat round. Ah, oh, that's tempting. But we need two successes. But we should be able to do that. Wow, I think I will go for the ore. That's for sure. Unfortunately, we have a mind value of only two and we reduce it by one. So we would be allowed to draw one card. So let's do that. Ah, that's not a success. Of course, we can now exert. And I think I will do that. So I will get rid of the sense of direction. Draw again. Again, not a success. I think I will do it one more time. So we will exert again. Let's draw an additional skill card. Again, not a success. Ah, now I'm not so sure. Okay, let's let's do that one more time. I think let's go for this one here and draw another card. Okay, now we have one success, but we still need one more. And we are down to only one skill card, the victory for Totem. This, this was really something I wanted to keep, but I think this is more powerful. Let's go for it. Let's go for it. So uh, let's exert one last time and let's see what we get. And ah, gosh. Okay. Unfortunately, we are not successful. Otherwise, shuffle the card back to the adventure deck. That's really a pity. Hate it. Okay, that really hurt. This would have been such a cool card for her. One magical damage at the start of each combat round. These are, I think, fighting against Arid at least three or four points worth of damage. That's really unfortunate. But I guess those were all her three actions for this round. Yeah, that's the case. So let's move the time token and flip those adventure gems. But we are not flipping adventure gems on spaces where heroes are currently located, of course. And I think I will end my playthrough for today Ariad already moved twice. Right now she's in Riverwatch. Her next stop would be Dawnsmoor here in the southwestern part of Terranoth. Right now both of our heroes would be able to reach her. That's for sure. But I think they still need to buckle up a little bit in order to have a chance to take her 
out. We still have two more entire turns before she would move to Dawnsmoor, so I think overall that's a good thing. But after that, we only have three more turns left because the next, the last time she would enter this one here, this would be game over. But again, this round still does count, so we might be still able to defeat Ariad before she makes her move towards Tamale here. I really hope you are still enjoying my little playthrough of Rune Mode here. I certainly do. I hope or I still hope I'm not doing too many mistakes. Again, make me aware if you catch any. And again, I will try to repair them as much as I can. Hope to see you soon in one of my next videos. And until then, bye bye. <laughs>